everyone. This is the FFmpeg talk. I actually started this uh, right after, immediately after last Freaknik. I was like, huh, what topic do I know about that I can present on? FFmpeg. So I was like, well, everyone knows how a little bit how to use it, so I thought, FFmpeg. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> so, quick intro on me. I pronounce it Puyo Puyo. Uh, I converted back to Linux back in 2012. I like long walks on the beach and encoding editing videos. Uh, I don't know how many hours I've spent reading documentation on video codecs and reading codec comparisons and toying around. So, um, I like Myth TV. We run that. Uh, SSH is awesome. BTRFS, loving that now. As soon as they get the RAID 5.6 stuff figured out. Uh, <laughs> A couple laughs. All right, NerdCon. All right. Uh, R-Sync, awesome. I like memes and photography, and like everyone else here, I'm a nerd. So FFmpeg is called the Swiss Army Knife of video tools. It's command line. It can run inside of a screen inside of SSH, meaning you can SSH into somewhere, set, uh, start screen up, do a thing, all right, detach, come back, hey, everything, by then everything's done. It is open source. It's not quite a GPL, mad, brimstone, but... And it's awesome! It opens nearly every video format out there. So, FFmpeg, formats. So for all of these, we see a little D. Demuxing supported. These are all the, the, file, the file types that it can actually open and encode. A couple of one, needed ones on there. It can do Lego Mindstorms, encoding and decoding. Does anyone remember this one? Bink Video. <laughs> yeah, Bink, oh yeah. It can do GameCube videos, PS2 videos. It can encode every, it can decode everything. It can also encode a ton. Lego Mindstorm again, FLV. And there's a ton of different filters out there. Again, so the A to A here are the audio video, audio filters alone. Video filters. I mean, it can do so many things. Has anyone ever used YouTube? They use FFmpeg. Why reinvent the wheel? So if you go to ffmpeg.org slash ffmpeg-all, that has all of the uh, documentation on it. Or you can just do, man, if it's big, well, again, it just goes on and on and on and on. So many things it can do. So a couple little, I'm going to have a lot of uh, command line up here, so try to preface everything with try to interpret things. So operations that happen before the I operate on the input, whereas after the I operate on the output only. So the ffmpeg-r60 here, dash I, file name one, file name two, that has a completely different operation than ffmpeg I, file name one, dash R60. What the first one will do is actually set the frame rate. It will force the frame rate on the file one as 60 frames per second. This one will actually uh, set the uh, frame rate on the second one for 60 and will actually add frames or delete frames as needed. Dash I is it for your input, F for format, rate, uh, rate, uh, rate frame rate. As, uh, as you saw, different kinds of audio and codec, and did, uh, audio and video codecs. So their terminology is dash C colon A for audio codec, V for video, S for subtitle. VF, video filter, very same thing. Uh, their method of doing things is video a dash VF, and then you do the filter title, the filter option, and then the filter value with equal signs between. So FPS equals FPS equals 30,000 divided by 1,001 will actually result in a 29.997 frame rate. But the option and the filter name are the exact same, so that's kind of weird. Uh, you use commas to to chain everything in. So you can do, take your input, crop it, and then you can rescale it, and then you can transform that. 
ro rotate it if you want, all in that specific order. Uh, dash T for the time, or dash TO for, you can actually set, say, well, I'll, I'll get to it in a little bit, but T for T and TO for time. So first thing FFmpeg can do, remux videos. So AVI, MP4, MKV, MPG, VOB, those are, those are more code, those are uh, containers. Those are extensions, but they're mostly they're the containers themselves. So in MP4, everyone's phone can play that. But what you don't see is inside that MP4 container, in that file, it has information about the frame rate, information about the codec, the bit rate. It has information about audio, subtitle, metadata, like the chapter, ta uh, tags, uh, titles. It has all that inside of the actual container. So <clears throat> simple enough to convert from, say, an MP4 to an MKV, or a AVI to an MKV, or even an MPEG MPG to an MKV. I like MKV because it's open source and it accepts every file format out there. MP4 can only do AAC for audio, and, uh, AAC and WAV, I believe, and um, mostly, I think it's X, uh, DivX or XVID, and um, uh, X2, or H264 for a video. And that is it. If you try to feed something else to it, it blows up and says, oh, I can't do it! And <coughs> the Matroska, it's like, oh, yeah, the subtitle type? Sure, I'll do it. I don't care. It'll take everything. MP3 for audio, wave, everything. So, FFmpeg-i, file name one, dash C, copy, and file name two. That alone, will grab all the streams from file name, or from file one, and dump it into file two, with zero loss of quality, and be done in seconds. In a different format. Different container. Container. Yes. Or, if you want to, you can choose just to copy one video, or the video from this, and transcode to something else. So here you can say, from uh, file name 2, dash C audio, the, for the audio codec, the AAC built-in codec. It's Use useful the, for ripping MP3s out of YouTube videos. Yes. <laughs> that is, yeah, it just, it's just a different... Uh, uh, just a different stream in the, con the container, so why not? And then say if you want to then take AAC audio and use the uh, lib x265 video codec and you can encode it into MKV. Alternately, you can say FFmpeg file name 3 SS to stream skip. So this will actually, but uh, after the I, it'll use accurate frame skip, frame rate. So you have to chug through the entire thing and it gets to 4 minutes and 28.123 uh, seconds and then it'll start right there. And go to 9 minutes. Dash C, copy, short. So this will take a, uh, was a three, 5 minutes, no, 4 minute and 32 second file. Can you get any more precise than that? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> you can point to the specific frame. That's what we do. Yes. So, say you have the movie Hackers. Everyone has a copy. Admit it. So, good video. Good video. Bad, horrible audio. Hilarious movie. And then you have Hackers.aac. For whatever reason, it came across as an audio only. And then you have the Hackers on Hackers commentary from Freaknik10 that Iron Geek has. Uh, available for download. What if you want to combine all three? FFmpeg dash I for hackers, your AVI, dash I again for hackers AAC, dash I hackers on hackers, and then you can do what's the map function. So you do map zero because zero means one, colon V. Now you're specifically saying take the first input and grab just the video. And then dash map one. File name two, and grab the, the uh, first stream, which is in this case just audio, and then uh, the yeah the third input, and grab just the audio. Dash C, copy, and summation. This will take video feed from the AVI and the two audio feeds, and then spit it out into a single video file that has two audio tracks. 
Again, no loss in quality, and they'll be done in five or six seconds. Number three, default settings. So this is a very valid case right here. FFmpeg i, file.vob, file2.mp4. What you don't see going on here, though, is it's saying, it's saying it's recognizing that you want the mp4 file. So it's recognizing, all right, mp4 container with a move atom at the end, which is just dash f mp4, an audio <coughs> encoded via the AAC codec, set to 128 kilobits a second, and then H.264 compliant video encoded via the X.264 codec, encoded at CRF23, Which and use preset medium, uh, constant rate factor. So the, it's a way of doing two-pass quality video in a single pass. Whereas if you say you set the uh, video bit rate or you want a target bit rate of one megabit, that's great for slow moving, for example. But for really fast moving, then you're getting one megabit. Whereas if you target via a CRF, you can say it operates a dynamic leap. So if you have a, a episode of a kid's show at CRF 22 versus a uh, action movie at 22, same run length, they would have completely different bit rates to it. So it's an accurate way of saying, I want this quality, and I don't care what bit rate you get. So, and then a uh, preset medium. So really, all out. This is what these, this command looks like, all spelled out. You can also do a DVD compliant video from a MPEG, which then you can pass into um, a couple different other programs, but getting that DVD compliant MPEG at first. So again, just F of MPEG file, dash target DVD. And then you can do also a VCD for old school video CDs. You can do DVDs and a couple of different other uh, a couple of different targets out is there. The YouTube target? I, don't remember. Uh, uh, I do not believe there is a YouTube target. I could very well be wrong because every time I say, "Yeah, I know all about it," oh, well, I got shown up. There again, it just goes on. The FFmpeg filters. Again, the VF video filter, AF audio filter. A couple of my favorites were the crop detect, and then uh, and then pipe. A, a, a dash F for a format for a null, and then have everything dumped down to the dev null direct file. What that'll do is, you can say, do a crop detect and audio detect with the audio and video filters here, or a volume detect, and it'll actually run through the entire video, and then say, all right, well, based off of what I could see, here's your audio bit, audio histogram in terms of decibels. So you know how much, and then it also tell you what the loudest sound is. So you can raise up the audio without having to worry about any clipping. Then the crop detect, whenever you're running it, it'll actually go through all the, look for the black borders and say, all right, here's this. Oh, and here's a nice little format to say crop this. Um, field match and teleside and pull up and yeah, those all deal with inverse teleceming. So if you want to talk about that, I can, I can go talk your ear off about IVTC. Uh, it is a way of coming up with uh, five video frames from four to fit the 24 frames per second film standard into the 30 frames a second DVD or uh, NTSC standard. So, and if you actually want to, uh, there should be an FFmpeg workshop tomorrow, and I actually have a couple of uh, I have a example of doing that. So. Uh, a couple other ones, yet, if, yet another deinterlacing filter. So, and again, there isn't just one of these. There are at least two or three different deinterlacing filters in there. Uh, like I said, field match is a field match and teleside is one way of inverse teleceming. Pull up and then setting the FPS is one way. Pull up and setting the rate is another way. Sometimes it works fine. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, for whatever reason, uh, was that. Again, just want like, oh, hackers, yeah, I have that one at home. Uh, did a, using the uh, inverse teleceming of FPS, it worked fine. And then about halfway through, it would start every couple frames to get off. It's like, what? But if you do the dash R, it works. So uh, that's a little, that's a gripe of mine, but I couldn't tell you where it does that. So it can also do screenshots and GIFs, the hard G. <laughs> so, 
Here it's just saying set to stream skip. Since it is before the dash i, it's actually operating on keyframes. So this will actually just go, if you tell it to go uh, an hour and 20 minutes in. If it, the SS is after, it'll go and sit there all day. If it dash SS, it finds it right away. And it does it as accurately as it can to the keyframe. So you input your movie, dash T, say five seconds, dash R for you know, 15 frames a second, and dash movie. Great, but this is open source. There's got to be other ways of doing the same thing. Oh. So you know, there's another way of doing it when that's making a two pass. So the fur up here at the top line is just using a very generic palette. So if you do the VF palette gen, the uh, video filter for the palette gen, it'll actually spit out a, it's like a, a GIF palette with 216 colors. Exactly, yes sir. It'll actually spit out a GIF palette. And then from there, you can say, use your input for the palette, and then use your input from the video, use the complex filter, which I haven't even, I've barely scratched the surface on, all my use on it, and then palette use, and then do that. And that will actually spit out a much nicer looking video, or much, much nicer looking uh, GIF file. If you use the one up here, it'll actually have a lot of, look like a little bunch of dots, kind of in a grid through the, through everything. But also, you can use it on images. So you can say, take the GIF that you just created, and then transcode it into an MP4. Or you can take a bunch of JPEGs. So this is uh, its term. It's from uh, it is its method of saying image dash three zeros and then a digit for everything from that using following that pattern or everything. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, everything in that pattern, that JPEG, it'll grab that. And you say, I want to set the frame rate to 10 frames a second. Right. So would that be useful for like making your own claymation kind of videos? Yeah, claymation videos, um, uh, not long exposures in terms of photography. Uh, time lapse. Yeah, time lapse, thank you. Yes, so create your own time lapse from just a bunch of images. You can make it in there. And you got to the the Carl have the Carlton. So you have to have the one. Carl. Carl. Oh, gotcha. Carl. Oh, actually, I want to drag in the. Oh. Thing. Which one? R ten dash I. File of images. I can get it. From All right. So this was something that I actually just started doing. Oh, and by the way, that uh, that palette gen, I learned about that last week. <laughs> so again, there is a. GIF files have a limitation of 216 colors. So Correct. They have a video, usually they have more than 216 colors. Exactly. And so I was actually trying to get uh, the the scene whenever in uh, The Force Awakens, whenever the guy yells "Traitor!" and throws down his uh, she uh, throws down his blaster and pulls out the whatever that thing was. I was trying to get that into a GIF. And I was like, "Huh, it looks kind of blocky. Surely there's got to be another way." And again, like I said, I learned about that last week. I've been using FFmpeg now for four years, and I still am learning things all the time about it. So then also, it can speed up video tracks and audio tracks. So if you want to go to half speed, then uh, just your input file is normal, that uh, dash AF for audio filter, the A tempo for audio tempo equals 0.5, and the VF equals set PTS, and then the, uh, with the value of equals two times the PTS. What this is saying, it is the uh, playback timestamp. So it's saying your new playback timestamp is actually gonna be twice that of the original. Uh, wait, that doesn't, it somehow, that one still confuses me. But then chain that with the FPS filter, so now this will take a normal film and slow it down at keep it at still 30 frames a second I've actually implemented this in my myth, myth TV setup now where you're saying normal speed AF a set PTS and uh, 
points a game. Points. So the uh, set PTS equals PTS times 0 0.8. VF do the same exact same thing, radio frame, and then the same frame rate. This is very handy because now you have a one hour movie shortened to 41 minutes. You know, I have kids, I got a life. I'm not going to sit here and put your workout video on it. <laughs> yeah, but the interesting thing. So the interesting thing is with the A tempo, it actually does pitch uh, correction while it's doing it with that audio filter. But if you use the A set PTS, it actually does more of a cutting thing. It doesn't actually change so much the. Uh, tempo, or not the, uh, it does change the tempo, but it doesn't actually change the tones of it. So, in terms of the frequency, I can't, I'm not entirely sure about that one. I think it probably, how it operates is it dumps every, it basically processes it in the raw and then recompresses it. So it probably is at the original frame, uh, original audio frequency for that. But I assume it still sounds sounds good. Yeah, yes, it, it, it still it, sounds. It takes, in this case, twenty millisecond slices. It cuts out every fifth one, and so it retains the same pitch while increasing the tempo. But it is, if you're unless you really are like, oh, wow, this is only forty one minutes. You kind of, it really is hard to see. Yeah. So I've seen some of the podcasting clients. They can do silence detection. They can cut that down. They can also speed up audio. Mm -hmm. uh, can you do the same kind of thing with the FFmpeg? Yeah. Exact same thing. You can I can operate entirely on just on audio. Uh, I took a bunch of because it's a command line. I just did it in a for loop. Said all right for all these file for all these audio files. Actually set the uh, tone to do this. Use this video. Uh, use this audio codec and spit it out. And again, since it's command line, you can do that and script it all. Again, you can go tw you can go twice as fast. So you just would set the PTS to half of what it would be, or if you want to go even faster, you can go to ludicrous speed. Some PowerPoint skills there, right? So very similar, changing the tone, the things. You can also compose two videos side by side. Now this one I have an asterisk by because it's in the manual, and it's online, and documentation is there. But I've never done it because that is the actual command. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From what I get, it is saying create a, a uh, null video with a size of 200 by 100 pixels, label it the background, and then take the first input video, and then not entirely sure what that one does. I'd have to really look at that one up. But again, it's, as you see, FFmpeg is so deep. Scale it down to 100 by 100 pixels and label that as left. Do the same thing for the right. Then take the background with the left, overlay it, and then do the same thing with on the right hand side, adding it side by side. Cheap reading. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure that can probably be, that's a very easy way of doing it there. Screen recording. So on the Linux side, there's the dash F for formats X11 grab, video size 1600 by 900, frame rate 25 frames a second, dash I for your input, and that's just saying the default video device, and dumping this to Freaknik 20 dash MKV. Uh, okay. It was running. So. Here's me editing slides a little bit beforehand, but it actually can do screen recording while it's going. VLC has something very similar, and I was actually talking with an um, uh, operator who is speaking next door, I believe? Tomorrow, uh, I tomorrow? Okay. I was talking with him a little bit ago, and he was saying that there is a crazy Chinese sketchy executable that can do all these crazy things, but if you look at it, it's a front end for FFmpeg. If you, uh, handbrake, has anyone ever used handbrake before? Show of hands. Pretty much using the FFmpeg. <laughs> kind of crazy. But again, you can get really in depth with it. You can say, you can capture the audio as well with the dash F pulse for pulse audio. 
you can uh, specify two audio tracks for left, right. It can also do debuxing. Uh, that's also in the workshop tomorrow if anyone's interested still. And you can specify codecs, bit rates, everything. I said I, said I like memes. So it can also start a mailing list fight. <laughs> So we're not particular with, with how we communicate at all, are we? On the mailing list, they always say, please, follow the netiquette when posting on the FFmpeg mailing list, especially avoiding top posts. If you send a reply to an email and you don't, you'll get a, please do not top post, it's considered rude. Back in February, one person goes, why? Gmail, Outlook, and Thunderbird other and others don't default to top. And he was unaware, and he kind of was, I, I had to think back, like, oh, well, why is it that way? Eventually, I was like, oh, okay. There was a lot of good discussion. But then there was one guy, I really hope it was a troll, says, gmail.com does not include options to write at the bottom. Outlook, if you have this option, but this application is payment. Evolution does not have that option. Thunderbird does not have this option. If you have Kmail but does not allow everencing the ancient text. How was Babby formed? <laughs> Another person says, click the three little dots. He replied, and I'm the rude when you are insulting. And top, post, top posting the entire time. There is, so seriously, if you do look at the mailing list archives, back in February 2016, you see a little couple of things here, a couple things there, and then you see 50 threads and 50 emails to this. And it was just a mailing list fight. And it was just like, all right, sit back and watch it burn. Just, this is awesome. They need to do way and stay mother. So, questions, comments, complaints? Question. Yes, sir. All right. Could you compare and contrast the capabilities of FFmpeg versus the Men Coder? Oh, okay. Men Coder is what uh, designed by the M, uh, M, M Player Group. Right. Um, I actually was really on the fence between FFmpeg and uh, Men Coder. M Coder, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, M Coder has a lot better inverse teleceming. Back in 2012 is whenever they first got the uh, field match and decimate filters incorporated into FFmpeg. Uh, personally, I just, I don't know. And players like, okay, that works. But for whatever reason, I just, I just like FFmpeg more. I've not done nearly as much homework with uh, MemCoder. It has a lot of the same filters, a lot of the same functionality. But for me, I just like FFmpeg more. Um, there's also a fork from FFmpeg that happened a couple years back uh, called libav, and uh, Ubuntu, part of the reason why I actually switched away from them was if you type FFmpeg uh, a couple years back with their default repositories, it said, oh, this command is actually, uh, FFmpeg is going to be, is now uh, deprecated and will be going away soon. It's like, what? So there's a lot of drama that went into it, but basically you, uh, Ubuntu was using the libav team's version of it. Um, libav has hired on developers to do the same thing that the same filters that FFmpeg's users have done, their developers have done. Uh, libav tends to kind of be more, from what I read, they tended to be a little bit more snotty and a lot more, well. We can do it this way. We're going to do it this way and do things without, they break things all the time. FFmpeg developers, they tend, now they're tending to be a lot more conservative and open and a lot better in terms with their development uh, mailing list. So, but speaking directly to MemCoder and FFmpeg, I'm sorry, I can't really speak much about that. I need to spend more time reading about that one. Does FFmpeg come with all the codecs required to do all of those wonderful things? Out yes. Of the, box? the only one, the only reason why I've ever actually compiled FFmpeg from source, and they do have very helpful wikis on different uh, for compiling on Debian, compiling on Fedora, and all the other uh, good, yummy Linux distros out there. 
is the uh, lib FDK AAC. So uh, A, the FFmpeg group has their own internal AAC decoder, but um, the Fraunhofer company group, or some of the people who actually did, came up with the AAC and MP3 specifications to begin with, you can't, they have their source open as the FDK AAC codec, but because of libraries, or I'm um, sorry, because of licenses, they are restricted from uh, distributing the codec compiled. So the source is available, you just need to actually compile it. So that is the only reason why I've actually ever compiled FFmpeg. Yes, sir? Could you contrast and compare FFmpeg with virtual dub? Virtual dub is Windows, and FFmpeg is Linux and better. <laughs> virtual dub, I've, whenever I was on Windows, I used a lot of virtual dub. Uh, virtual dub by itself does not actually support, uh, it only supports a couple different uh, video for Windows codecs. Everything has to go through video for Windows. Um, it only does not handle audio well at all. It doesn't do variable frame rates. Whereas FFmpeg, all that is built in native to it. And like I said, uh, FFmpeg works, it's cross platform. So I did actually a, a lot of testing on, the, uh, on a Windows box using a compiled version. Does VLC use FFmpeg? VLC, I think, VL. It's an interesting relationship between VLC and FFmpeg. They're actually, VLC is actually, last I remember, they were actually hosting FFmpeg source and development because of all the libav fallout and the fork. Um, FFmpeg, FFmpeg and VLC use a lot of the same codecs, like libx264, they use that one quite a bit. Everyone uses libx264, but I don't, I think they use their own internal system, their own, uh, they use their own internal stuff. Okay, any others? Yes? Do you know a Linux distro that out of the box already has FFmpeg? Out of the box, it would have to be one of the variants of Ubuntu, like uh, Studio Ubuntu or whatever it's called. Um, the, on, at least with... AV Linux. What AV about, Linux. What about that? I'm, I'm asking. I don't, know. I, honest, I don't know. I'd have to take a look at it. It could be. Yes, but the big thing is Debian now. Uh, Ubuntu. I primary. I run those mostly. So Debian, I know for a fact. And uh, if you just app install FFmpeg, pulls FFmpeg, and not the libav version, but the actual from the FFmpeg developers themselves. Uh, Ubuntu does it. Um, older versions of Ubuntu don't, but like I said, they made that switch within the past year, I believe. Um, which, which are the, when, when do you get to all? And what, what's the, like, we're running what, 12, 12, 12, 12. Uh, 12, they still were using the libav version. Okay. But you can, um, I'm sure there's a way to change the packages to point to a different version. I mean, it's open source, it's Linux, it, yeah. Okay, any others? So besides like um, speeding up your, your video, what else do you uh, do with it? Are you using FFmpeg for? Mostly what I actually do is I use FFmpeg to encode ripped movies and put them on my media share. So uh, I, I routinely put uh, Blu-ray rips on there for you know op personal use, obviously, entirely. Um, <laughs> no, seriously though, I mean, pop a DVD in, wait for. Do not do not steal this movie. Wait for it. Oh, here's the unskippable loading screen. Wait for it. Okay. Just or watch a movie. I can just use Cody. You know, click 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 streaming across the network. Or yeah, kids, it's great to uh, kids movies. translate to a lower quality. You know, kids don't care. And then throw like 6,000 on a tablet. Here you go, kid. <laughs> I've never thought about slowing it down for them, but uh, you know, I do a lot of. Uh, <laughs> there you go, see? Didn't know I could do that. Uh, but mostly kids' movies, putting them on my network server so I can watch them anywhere in the house. I can watch them whenever I want. Uh, I have a Myth TV set up 
as well at home that use the FFmpeg script. I use some FFmpeg scripts to now they uh, scale it down from so in a Monmouth TV encodes as MPEG file at eight megabit. Great quality, except if you want to put it on your phone or take it anywhere or watch it across the network, then. Uh, I have scripts that actually compress it down to a 720 by 480 resolution, change the audio out to a uh, from st to stereo audio, boost it by three decibels, and then um, encode it using X264, different presets, and all this. And then, boom, what was 5 gigs is now 120 megs in some cases. Some people have on older formats such as VHS home video. Mm -hmm. I've used it to restore some history by with it because it can read directly from a video capture device. Yes, not necessarily a file. As long as yeah, very much, very well said. Uh, I've actually was trying to trying to figure out how to do it with my current setup. Unfortunately, looks like I have to buy some more hardware to do just that to convert some home VHS home videos. Uh, but yes, FFmpeg can read directly from the from the uh, slash dev file. A special file that Linux gives a video encoder or a, a video input device, and then from there, all right, hit play, enter, just dumps it, and then there you go, perfect copy, or not a perfect copy, but very good. Yeah, there's your video. This is your full-time job. No, this is my hobby. <laughs> no, like I said, uh, I way back in 2000 and. Three, 2002, I came across a couple of those like 700 megabyte movies. Like, how did they do that? So I literally downloaded how this the uh, how the the scene rules were for re uh, for re releasing a video. And what's interesting is FFmpeg is actually flat out said don't use it because of the audio encoder. For everything else about it, they say for the audio encoder, use the Nero codec, but use libx2 uh, x264 to encode your video. Well, FFmpeg is using the libx264. I mean, it is using probably a more up-to-date version than half the people out there are. It was the audio encoder is the issue, but you can choose different audio coder and codecs. So, um, but literally, I sat there and I read page after page after page after page and read every I read about every option I could about at the time Xvid and Divix and what every single option was and what how to get the best quality out and then um, started like well Vista's out or not I'm sorry not Vista eight's uh, coming out Windows eight yeah I think this is a good time to go to Linux so. Since then, I was like, all right, the only thing that was keeping me back was a video encoder. Looked around for min, uh, Mincoder, FFmpeg, LibAV, tried to kind of, right, what's all of them? All right, FFmpeg to me had the, to me had the best promise. So I said, all right, I'll, I'll spend a year learning that. And, and it, it took a good couple, maybe it took about a year to kind of wrap my head around a lot of the in intricacies of it. But... It is a very, very, very powerful program, and especially if you can just set it off running in a screen session and walk away. SSH back in from a different thing. Oh, hey, let me uh, walk, uh, pop back in. Oh, it's already done. There you go. If you have something over at a different location and you just want to, you don't care about the size, or you, just, I'm sorry, you want a smaller size, you don't. You just want to watch it on your phone. Yeah, okay. FFmpeg, script it, shrink it down, copy it over to your phone. There you go. You're sitting there watching last night's episode of The Walking Dead or whatever on your phone. So. Any others? One of the problems I had with Mencoder is it doesn't do tasks in parallel at all. Mm. Everything's linear. I wonder if FFmpeg might leverage a little bit more, so everybody's machine has multiple cores, right? Mm -hmm. so you set it in the screen, walk away. Well, you've got 16 cores, is it going to split 16 jobs? Is it probably one core per track, maybe? I don't know. Uh, that depends entirely on the codec. Um, the AAC encoders are limited to one thread. 
My laptop is a quad-core hyper-threaded, and I can guarantee you it uses 100% of all whenever I'm encoding a, a, a video. So it uh, definitely uses up a lot of, uh, uses up my CPU usage and spins up the fans pretty good. It's a good, uh, good heater. <laughs> Any others? When are you moving to Hendersonville? I've got lots of video to work with. Gotcha. Yeah. Give me an SSH shell. You don't have to be there. <laughs> Say that again. Give me a uh, SSH sh shell and okay. I can rem just SSH in. And, all right, let me cut this little video out right. here. Oh, okay, I need to do this. Uh, I'll take your card. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll get it to you after. Okay. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. I mean, Jeff, have you have much experience um, like editing video with a command line as opposed to using a GUI with that effect? Because actually, that's what I mean. That's what I want to experiment with, just for fun. Right. You know, because it seems like it's obviously you can do it. Yeah. But uh, you know, you can do it a piece at a time. Or you can do like many, like many clips at once into one video. So yeah. I just wonder if you had any experience trying to do that. My understanding <laughs> is with uh, if you were going to take multi, if you're going to take one chunk of a video and code that, one chunk of another video and code that, the uh, container information has to be the, exactly the same, or else yeah. they will not uh, concatenate very well. They would or copy very well. You would need to actually, it would have to do a full. Um, recompression, transcode the entire thing. So in that case, it's like uh, I could do this, but I'm a quality nerd. You know, I think why? FFmpeg's place in that particular role is to pre-encode everything to the same base level and then load them in through the GUI and get everything all seen up. And up yeah. And maybe use it later to get it to your different output containers and encode. Yeah, but like I said, I know for a fact uh, at one point in time, Google actually did use uh, FFmpeg. For, to handle, you upload one video to YouTube, and then, all right, they just had scripts to say, all right, run this, transcode it to this format, run this, trans, uh, scale it back to this, and set the bit rate to this, and just to all the different formats and resolutions out there. It's scriptable. You can run everything, you can set up a for loop to run it. It can read, as you see, it can read, Bink video. I mean, come on, Bink. Well, the real audio. I'm sorry. Do real audio. Real video. Real audio. No. I think so, actually. Dot RA. It wasn't terrible. Okay, yeah, it was terrible. Yep. But oh wait, no, that's terrible. That's SIC. It was all we had in 1997. Dash SIC. Real video. Real audio. Never joke. Uh. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it can even Wing, Wing Commander three movies. I didn't know that they had. Oh, I guess they did have a video. They had Mark Hamill in it. Yeah, was it Heart of the Tiger? Yeah, Heart of the Tiger was number three. Yeah, no, it was Wrath of the Killer Ant. was number three. I can't remember. But yeah, I would have thought they used like Bing for that as well. But I know I can read Windows Media Video too. Microsoft XMV, X11 screen capture, there you go. Sony PS3, wow. Huh. Final Fantasy is game. All right, any others? All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much.